Hi guys, it's Troy the Full Setup back with another review for you. Now, last year, Arctic Crawling sent me this the Freezer 33 Esports 1, and I was super positive about it in the reviews. I thought this was a really good step up from Arctic. They've always offered fantastic price to performance, but visually not that pleasing. Now, because this was more visually pleasing, it was a little bit more expensive. Now, being Arctic, it was still cheap. It was 35 to 40 pounds. But as soon as they sort of stepped up into that CPU area, selling prices for that price for CPU coolers, that's when there was a lot more competition. And there was a few things that I didn't like about it. One was mainly the mounting system. Now, the great thing about Arctic is if you're super positive, they love it. But if you're critical, they're happy to hear the criticism as well. And they said to me after I released the video, don't worry, we've got another cooler coming out. And here it is, the Freezer 34 Esports Duo. See many differences there? Doesn't really look to be any different, does it? Is it just been renamed? No, there has been some really nice improvements. So I thought rather than just review the newer model, the Arctic Freezer 34, let's do a little comparison. So I'm gonna take you in front uppy closely in a minute. We're gonna have a look. Are there any differences between the two coolers? Because I know as someone that's a consumer, they pretty much look like the same cooler. So we're gonna take you for an up and close. Um, I've also got these scores from the last benchmarks I did with that as well. So we've got some similar benchmarks as well. So we can do a bit of a temperature comparison. I'm then gonna come back at the end of the video and give you my thoughts, feelings, pros and cons. So we're gonna first start by comparing the boxes. Now we're not gonna unbox the Freezer 33 because I already have unboxed this. Um, there's nothing really in this apart from a few accessories at the moment, but looks to be the same cooler. This box is a little bit bigger. They both have a 10 year warranty. One's called the Esports Edition. They're now calling this the Esports Duo. I'm still not sure about the name choice. Now looking around to the side as well, the specs look to be near enough all the same really. So the fans are both going at the same noise level. So it's 0.5 zone, which is equivalent to about 20 decibels. They've got this same four six millimeter copper heat pipes. They all support AM4, also, you know, mainstream Intel 115X, and they also do 2011 and 26 for the Intel as well. Looks to be a few more things included. Manual card. I do sort of like the manual card for, you know, saving the environment and stuff, but it's a bit of a pain that you have to go online to get the manual. Now, as we can see here, look, this one, this is with an eight, this is a bit weird though. So this is an 1800X they have it compared to, so 51.8 degrees load. And here they're saying a 2700X at 54.5C. A few little differences on the boxing as well. Here we actually are showing that it's got the push-pull configuration. I think this was probably just the same used for both the dual and single as well. So it's good to see that they've got slightly set different boxing. That's about it. But there are, two very good differences the two differences that i wanted to see and the two differences that i complained about when i did the review as well so first we've got the accessory box which i'll have a look in a second thank you for choosing arctic happy i'm always generally quite happy with arctic and then we have the cooler and there is also a to use this qr code to get the manual but we're going to show you an install in a second so let's have a look inside the accessory box so here we have this is the intel backplate for am4 you're going to use the am4 backplate now these are different so it's now all black these were mounting down to the cooler previously they were in silver so that's nice to see one thing i'm going to say though is this black does scratch very easily and then there is the rest of the mounting screws and some Arctic MX4 thermal paste as well. Would have been really nice to see it in a little tube. Obviously, if you mess up after an installation, you might not have any thermal paste. Always recommend you buy some more. Arctic have sent me out loads of this thermal paste, so thank you very much. And then all the mounting screws are black as well, as previously they were also silver. So we'll take a look at the improved bracket system in a bit as well. That's one thing I'm really happy to see. So here are the coolers, and can you guess which one is which? Can you guess? Look pretty similar to me, don't they? This is the Freezer 33, and as you can see here, these have the airflow fans, which I was really miffed why they didn't have the static pressure fans that they released, but that's because the static pressure fans weren't out when these fans were available. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is the cooler when stood up, 
if you can see that there the freezer 34 is a little bit bigger but it's not really that much it's a little bit bigger on the cooler and the width but on the height if you actually I've, it's going to be hard to see here i've got the coolers from top to bottom and they're next to each other and they're fine but on this one you can see the copper heat pipes four six millimeter copper heat pipes come down just a little bit lower okay as you can also see on the top here on the freezer 34 we have this arctic logo which is just like this and then we have this logo here as well now you might also see as well the fan holes are off center on this one because i put this on wrong the first time so i had that face in that way um, and that's because one of the fans have rubber pads on this one as you can see there's rubber pads here here if you have a look the fan holes are symmetrical as well so you're not gonna have that little issue so that was another problem actually i came across just installing it and i'm sure many other people did now there is definitely a difference in the cooler as well spotted that straight away as you can see they have all these little like triangular at the end of the heat stacks can you see that here as on the freezer 33 and on the freezer 33 we have none so yeah there's an extra difference there so it's lots of little subtle differences so we can see the fans here is an uppy closey airflow fan static pressure fan so we will see from the benchmarking now that came out at 82 degrees with the ryzen 2600 so it'll be interesting now they both have the same braided cable four pin pwm and then they have these for putting them together now on the cooler it's fine because they get out of the way but one thing i highlighted about is when you actually buy these other fans so say you plug that in somewhere onto your system header you actually have this cable poking about so i recommend getting extensions for these one other thing before we install so this is the rear fan from the freezer 33 and you can see these rubber pads on them now these have got a tendency to move about the newer ones as you can see they've got like these rectangle ones and they just feel a lot firmer on there i think it's because it's smaller and into place so yeah there's a hell of a lot of subtle changes on this that are working out very well indeed so when it came to mounting the freezer 33 like i said it wasn't something i found massively difficult but it was one that i recommended that you did out of the case because there's nothing to hold this back plate in place and one thing i showed you to do is if you were doing it in a case is i put some dvd cases underneath and i'm not going to put any firewall paste on this now because we're going to install the other one in a second so this is how you'd have to do it on the intel it's definitely best for doing outside of a case you just basically screw in that way otherwise it's like nigh on impossible to hold your hand at the back of the case and put it in so that was one of my sort of major digs at it really i said that other callers on the market had better mounting systems now where the freezer 34 is much better is that these screw directly into the back plate and it keeps the back plate in place so this means you do not need to remove your motherboard to do the installation especially if you are you know like first time installing a new cooler maybe you're just upgrading a stock cooler on a pre-built system i wouldn't have said that the older version was the easiest one to do so that's about it really you need to just put on a little bit of the old arctic mx4 this is what i use for all of my thermal tests we're just gonna put a little bit on there a bit less on for intel a little bit more on for amd because it's a slightly bigger die and then you just pop the cooler into place now one thing i found was a bit easier was to just push it down so it's on those two like that it's a bit hard to see here with the way i've got the camera and then just tilt it forward then you just simply screw these nuts on now one thing i always recommend is alternate corners and i only ever recommend two finger tight so as you can see here i'm doing like sort of two at the same time just going to finger tighten those it just sort of stops from putting uneven amounts of pressure on the board as well and one thing is like if you if you really do not like fitting this inside a case maybe it's just too tight for you do not over tighten when it's outside the case because you can find your motherboard might bend a little bit um, just from the pressure that's put on it so then always just do the final tighten when it's in the case now i've just done that hand tighten it's got a little bit of a wiggle on a play in it that one can go a bit tighter but yeah that isn't going anywhere so you as much as these have a phillips head you can just finger tighten these right i'm going to install it in my ryzen 2600 rig we're going to do a little bit of gameplay footage and we're going to do some overclocking as well so just like the arctic freezer 33 the freezer 34 looks absolutely fantastic in my ryzen 2600 build and as you can see i've paired it with some of their bionics fans that they've sent over to me and there is a full description of the specifications of the pc 
in the description but it's time to run some benchmarks then so let's start off with some battlefield 5 and we're only going to look at the arctic freezer 34 for the gaming benchmarks because we know the freezer 33 handled battlefield very well indeed now i'm playing at 1440p on an rtx 2060 so that's not going to put the cpu under as much stress at 1080p so what i'm actually doing is playing at low settings so as you can see it's going to put lots of stress on the cpu and with the Ryzen 2600 at stock, so that's with its 3.8 gigahertz turbo, you can see the temperatures are always within about the high 40s. I didn't really ever notice it go over into 50 degrees, so it has no problem keeping this CPU cool at stock settings. Moving on to something more demanding then, so Ida 64 again at stock settings, and the Arctic Freezer 33 and 34 scored exactly the same. The fans were spinning at near enough the same RPM. I would say the Freezer 34 sounded a little bit quieter than the 33, but they're at 55 degrees throughout with Ida 64. That's just its stock settings. But when we overclock Ryzen, so this is to 4.2 gigahertz at 1.425 volts, and I'm using load line calibration level two, that adds a serious amount of heat. And for the Arctic Freezer 33, we had temperatures of about 82 degrees. And for the Freezer 34, it's not much better. I didn't expect it to be massively better. Um, and that's at 79 degrees. Fans were running full whack for both. And again, I would say, they were both very loud but very audible when they're running at full rpms but i would say the freezer 34 did sound a little bit quieter than the 33 um, and these are high temperatures but what you've got to remember is id64 really is a worst case scenario and we are well within the specifications of the thermal limits of the cpu no throttling throughout the frequency stayed at 4.2 gigahertz and finally battlefield 5 at overclock setting so again 4.2 gigahertz 1.42 by volts load line calibration set to level two no trouble whatsoever running this game you can see the cpu is heavily stressed here and we're sort of in the high 50 degrees i did see it sneak up into the low 60 sometimes but generally it's keeping the cpu at just under 60 degrees and the fans were running at about 1300 rpm as well so the system was very quiet indeed so there were the thermal scores then and to be honest i didn't think there would be much of a difference in performance between the two coolers anyway like there is only so much performance you can get out of a 120 tower cooler with two fans there's only so much heat that you can shift away from the cpu but they both perform perfectly fine with a ryzen 2600 you're going to be perfect to overclock as well now to be honest i probably should have put some results in there from the stock cooler because then we could have seen the difference part of the reason that i didn't is because you can't overclock the 2600 to 4.2 gigahertz with the stock cooler anyway but maybe i should have just done some you know thermal results at stock settings now on the channel i do do lots of cpu cooler reviews but one thing i don't do is generally comparisons and part of the reason is is that although my temperature in my room is generally always between 15 and 20 degrees you know i haven't got any way to set the temperature so unless i did loads of cooler reviews on the same day that's part of the reason why i don't compare certain coolers to older coolers on a regular basis but that leads me over to the pros and cons then pros and cons well let's start off with the cons because i do have two two cons now one con i should have mentioned in the arctic freezer 33 video but i never you know this didn't happen at the time but um one thing i said is that these these little mounts that they're really nice and they don't really pop out that much now when i was swapping the freezer 33 cooler um a couple of months ago one popped out and i was just in a bit of a rush so you know i should have took a bit more time putting it in and i ended up scratching it down there just from where it slips so the paintwork on the top of here isn't the best like it's good but if you are installing it inside a case just be very careful really take your time because if this pops out and slides over it will scratch the top of the cooler the other con as well is the fan connector like i said on the cpu cooler it's good because you can hide it and you haven't got loads of cables but when you are put, buying the case fans to match you do have that little dangly bit that's poking out so i feel like it's a good feature that you can hook up more fans but from a visual perspective i just really don't like it over to the pros then well there's loads of pros the new mounting bracket absolutely love the mounting bracket the Freezer 33, I didn't think it was the hardest cooler to install, but it was hard to install inside a case. Now, what you have to think about as well is you might be a first time builder, you use the stock cooler, you built your whole PC, then you're thinking, okay, I wanna upgrade my cooler, I wanna get into overclocking or something like that. And then you've got to take your PC apart because you would struggle if you were sort of first time, second time builder. It was a little bit of a struggle. So that new mounting system, the way that you have the brackets, 
and then they're already screwed on the back plate secure and then you can fix the cooler is absolutely perfect and it's in line with mounting systems from like cryring and fantex so that is a huge plus static pressure fans now although they don't really offer that much more in the temperature side of things once you're overclocking i did notice that they the whole system seemed a little bit quieter i found that the rpms were always a little bit lower so the static pressure fans i'm very happy with those other pros available in lots of different colors um, would probably like to see some more colors don't know which colors haven't got anything off the top of my head maybe a blue i would also like to see an all black version like i'm considering building like i want to build a pc where everything is black like there is nothing like you look into it and all you see is darkness i want to build like a murdered out pc that would help me out another huge pro is now that there's a wide range of bionics fans you can pick them up in airflow and static pressure so you can do all your matchy matchy with your system as well now my last pro is that the price point of this cooler as well now when the arctic freezer 33 launched it was almost 50 pounds and the initial reviews were very positive but a lot of them said it's great to see arctic now making you know a very good looking design but it's a little bit expensive and the price did drop you know most of the time you could pick it up for 35 pounds so i was worried that this was going to be like 45 pounds when it came out so then people would look at the two coolers wouldn't think there's a difference and not buy this cooler i thought they were in danger of getting into the same situation they did when they launched the freezer 33 but you can pick the 34 up for 35 pounds so so my initial review of the arctic freezer 33 where i said it was like you know one of the best 120 coolers with dual fans if you didn't want rgb for me this this is the best like if you're looking at visuals performance price cooling sound everything yeah as an all-in-one package i would highly recommend this cooler to anyone definitely if you've got like an intel or ryzen cpu and you just want that little bit extra performance over a stock cooler i would 100 percent buy this cooler and there is a link in the description to where you can buy it anyway that's it from me today if you like the video leave a like if you dislike the video leave a dislike and make sure you hit that subscribe button